to always walk through that door. Hey, police! Don't move! We got the wrong guy! Hey, Jeff. Good morning to you. Oh, total thrill to talk to you today, buddy. Thank you so much for joining me. Uh, what a great thriller. I mean, unexpected, intense. I mean, I really, I had to watch some comedies afterward <laughs> to, to unwind. Yeah. Uh, well, thank you. You play Officer Crawford and, you know, op the opening scene and finding that body, I mean, it really sets the tone for the movie. And I thought to myself, because the guy who found it was casual, he stops by the side of the road to go to the restroom. And I can't imagine finding a body. I can't imagine having that happen. And uh, it just really sets the tone for the whole movie. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the subject matter is super dark um, and, and grisly. And, and I wanted to, with playing this character, um, Byron Crawford, who's a police officer, I wanted to, you know, find the parts of him that weren't just the jaded cop, that wasn't just the atheist you know, punch in the clock, there's no meaning to the universe kind of detective that we've seen in a lot of movies. So Alan and Randall and I, you know, we kind of thought about it and we we're like, you know, let's make this guy really a spiritual guy, him and his wife, let's make them really devoted Christians. And, and let's have that, that element be the thing that really gives him that motivation to kind of fight the forces of evil in a way that we just haven't seen from a lot of detectives lately you know a lot of the a lot of the detectives i've been seeing on screen lately are kind of like these jaded guys that don't really believe in anything because the job is so gnarly it, like it's shaking their belief in anything and i said well isn't it kind of cool if we have this guy who's a really devoted devout guy and the grisly nature of the job is is that it starts to kind of shake his faith a little bit but it's for him, it's the struggle to, to maintain that. And his wife is sort of the, one of the motivating factors in, in keeping him inspired. Yeah, there, that scene where he, you talk about your faith with your wife, you know, that the power of God was keeping you determined. But he believes he's the only one standing up for these victims, you know, because he's, his investigation has gone nowhere. And uh, so he feels like he's, he's like their personal uh he's he's out to, to solve these cases to he's standing up for these women and it says obsession and it may cost him his family so he has to make a choice doesn't he yeah well he you know his his wife does support him and and believe in him and he but he knows that in order to in order to solve this he's going to have to go beyond what the job requires on paper which is following protocol following the normal chain of command because if he followed protocol in the normal chain of command they would be getting nowhere and he feels a special obligation um and a kind of a quest of of righteousness to help these help these people and and solve these these cases you know so the i would say the harbor freight scene it shows his desperation i mean he's so close to solving the case to catching the serial killer and you just see him break down emotionally. It just shows the toll that it's taken on him, that he's so close. Yeah, yeah. I really wanted you to feel like he he knows how close he is. He's like a hunting dog that is just getting closer and closer. And and knowing that he's close and not quite there, you know, it's like the, the frustration begins to mount. And you see a guy who, you know, in the very beginning, he's very kind of calm and contained. You see him start to... Um, you know, unravel a little bit and, and really he's willing to kind of pull out all the stops here to, to figure this out. Okay. Cause you can see throughout the movie that his, uh, his superiors are like telling him go by the book, you know, even from the, everybody's telling him and you see him trying to break the rules because he's so obsessed with catching this killer. So I thought that was a different take uh, that we haven't seen with a, a cop playing, um, finding a serial killer. But uh, tell me about working with Megan Fox, because the movie doesn't turn around for him until he meets the FBI and then he starts getting those breaks. Yeah, well, working with Megan was great. Uh, the first scene that we shot was the bar scene where we're just having a beer and we're discussing details of the case, which was great because it was just kind of a back and forth talky scene. And I felt like in that scene, we both were able to really kind of sketch those characters a little bit. And you kind of, you get, a, you get a sense of Byron's philosophy as a police officer, 
on the on the environment that he's in megan's philosophy on fbi her her uh, assessment of the kind of guy byron is and his assessment of her and that you know they're able to kind of get a read on each other and sort of create a little bit of mutual trust in that scene to where they are both going rogue you know when 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 they when they do the um the panhandle bar setup you know they're both breaking the law i mean they are both not supposed to be doing that but they're two characters that are separately determined and inspired to to do the right thing you know um and to go that extra effort because they both feel desperate and and that if they don't do this it's never going to get done they they both feel stuck by the systems that they are working in and it's it's such a roller coaster an emotional roller coaster this entire movie and i love how the movie for you and your character, the closure for Crawford and the mother he returns to, not only closure for those two characters, but for the audience too. Yeah, and and I feel like for for Byron and his spirituality and the sense of right and wrong, you know, you see that that that, that was sort of guiding him the whole movie, you know, was this was wanting to wanting to restore the uh, the injustice you know or you know creating a sense of justice at the end that the good guys had had won and that he had helped this this mother find closure and he had he had stuck to his word she told him to come back you know that he had um you know that it was all worth it you know that there was meaning behind the work that he did it, for these people absolutely so it brought me to tears it really did so wonderful uh, well, in our final moments here, uh, I have to tell you that back in 2007, I was covering the Toronto Film Festival, and I was offered an interview with you for Into the Wild. And for whatever reason, my schedule, I didn't do it. And I, it's always been one of my biggest regrets of my career. So oh. here I am 14 years later. I just want to say how wonderful you are in that, how spiritual that movie is, how much it meant to me. So uh, thank you so much for that film. And, and thank you for this interview today, man. I've really enjoyed it. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. You have a wonderful day, okay? Thanks. Good luck with the film. All right. Thank you, Jeff.